Welcome back, everyone. Moving on with hypothesis testing to another example. So the average Starbucks waiting time is believed to be 230 seconds. They're thinking of implementing a system where waiting time will be reduced. They test the system on a sample of 120 customers and find the mean and standard deviation to be 221 and 42 seconds, respectively. At a 1% significance, is there evidence that the system is effective? So first thing, is uh, the population standard deviation known or unknown in this case? That's usually what I start these questions with, as you've seen in the past. And notice that we're not given the population standard deviation. We're given the sample standard deviation, 42 seconds, but nowhere in the question is the population standard deviation shown. So population standard deviation is unknown. So we're going to be doing a t-test, hence we're going to be using a t-distribution versus a z-distribution. So that we know already, um, what is the null and the alternative hypothesis going to be? What are we testing for? Usually I like to start with the alternative hypothesis. So notice that Starbucks is implementing a system to see whether the waiting time will be reduced. And so what they want to test for right now, the waiting time is believed for the entire Starbucks to be 230 seconds. So they want to test whether that waiting time is going to be reduced, whether it's going to be less than 230 seconds. And so the null hypothesis is that the waiting time is greater than or equal to 230 at this point. So if we show this on a diagram, notice that this is here a one tail test and more specifically a left tailed test. So we know there's going to be one critical value, which is going to be over here. And there's going to be one rejection region right here. And because it's a 1% significance, we know that this area here is 1%. And what we want to do now is get this critical value here. That's the next step. So we could get the critical value and then we could get our test statistic and see is our test statistic going to be in this region. This is going to be the rejection region where we're going to reject that null. So in this region, basically the system is effective or there is evidence showing that the system is effective. And then over here, this is where we uh, continue to accept the null. So the waiting time, there won't be evidence that the waiting time is uh, reduced. So to get the critical value, notice that we're using a T distribution, as I mentioned. So to get that critical value, first thing we need is the degrees of freedom on the t distribution we're going to be using. Degrees of freedom is always what? n minus 1, the sample size minus 1. Notice we take a sample of 120 customers. So 120 minus 1 would give us 119. So we want to look for this critical value here, um, the t value on the t distribution with the degrees of freedom of 119, where the area, the left-tailed area is 1%, and then that right-tailed area is the rest, so it's 99%. And multiple ways to find this critical value, you can use the table, right? So look up degrees of freedom of 119, and then look up these uh, left-tailed or right-tailed areas. You could also use the calculator. So if you do use the calculator, you would input all of this. So stat, you would hit F5 for distribution. We're working with the T distribution, F2. And then since we're finding a t value, we're inversing the t distribution. And then you would get to this input screen here. So we would have, uh, this would be variable. Remember the area, when you're working with a t distribution, it always gives you the area to the right. It always gives you the right tailed area. So we would put 0 0.99 degrees of freedom, n minus 1, which is 119. And then when you execute that, you would end up getting negative 2.358. So that's over here. So basically, that is the critical value right there. 
And once we have the critical value, next step, we have to find the test statistic. So because we're using a t distribution, I'm going to call it the t test statistic. And what is the general formula? I've introduced it before. It's basically the sample mean minus the population mean over the sample standard deviation over the square root of n, over the square root of the sample size. So the um, sample mean is 221. And then we got uh, the population mean 230. Uh, the sample standard deviation is 42 over the square root of 120. And when you do that in your calculator, you would end up getting negative 2.347. So that is our test statistic. And where does that fall on our diagram here? Negative 2.347. That is like over here. Right, so negative 2.347. And so notice from this, we could tell that we are failing to reject the no hypothesis. Meaning that in regards to this question, there's not enough evidence showing that this system is effective, uh, is effective in cutting down that waiting time, right? Because if it was effective, then the waiting time would be smaller. So this number would be smaller, for example, this sample mean, and it would make that test statistic smaller, so it'd be somewhere over here, right? So when we reject the null, we're, it's almost like we're rejecting the old system. So it shows us that the new system is working. But because we're here, we have to continue to accept the null hypothesis. We fail to reject it, meaning that that new system, there's no evidence or there's not enough evidence that the new system is effective. And if we were to do this with the calculator, we would go through these steps over here. So stat menu, F3 for test. F2, we're doing a t-test and then we are testing just one sample. And then you would get to this input screen here. So the data would be variable. Remember this here always depends on the alternative hypothesis. So notice there's a less than sign here. So this would be less than that uh, hypothesized population mean. And then this is the 230 that is given right here. X bar sample mean, which is, uh, what was it, 221. The sample standard deviation was 42, and then the sample size is 120. And then when you execute that, the output you're gonna get is this over here. You're gonna get a bunch of other stuff. They're gonna list out like the sample mean, sample standard deviation, etc. but these are the two values you wanna look at. So this one here, t equals negative 2.347, notice that that is the test statistic. That's what we got as well when we did it manually. And notice when you compare it to that critical value that we got from the t distribution, it's in that non-rejection region. So got the exact same answer, failed to reject the null. If you look at the p-value, what are the rules? If the p-value is greater than that significance level, which is 0 0.01, notice that it is greater, then that means that we failed to reject the null as well. If the p-value is less than the significance, then we would reject the null hypothesis, it'd be in the rejection region, but notice at a 1% significance, p-value is greater, so exact same conclusion either way. So we failed to reject the null hypothesis. So is there evidence that the system or the new system is effective? No, there's not enough evidence that the new system is effective.